how are you affected by the homosexual squatter? So you are affected by the homosexual squatter in the following ways. So you get off track emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and financially. You refuse to see the homosexual squatter as an individual who does not want to change and does not want change. You have a distorted vision of yourself as a resource center, a shelter, or a central place for refuge and help. You exercise pride and some arrogance in believing you are the person's answer to their homeless problem. You answer their homeless problem before you understand their problem and who he or she is as a homosexual squatter. You believe you can fix the person, love the person for a long time, believe that the person would change and hold out hope. You become a homosexual squatter because you have, you have invested too long and contributed to the ruin of your finances. You become that person. So, um, kind of working backwards for a minute, you, you, again, you attract what and who you are. And so if you spend too much time, there's a scripture in the Bible, uh, evil communication corrupts, corrupts good manners. So the longer you stay with a, a person who is non-productive, who gets into stuff, who uh, supports violence, who does everything but live a stable life, you're going to become that person eventually because evil communication corrupts good manners. You're going to start adopting their belief system because eventually that's what they're showing you, which, which is a belief system. Their belief system is that it is better to be a homosexual squatter than it is to be a stable person. Essentially. So that's why you get off track. You get off trap, uh, trap emotionally because you pull yourself into a situation thinking that you can solve the problem. You, you sustain yourself in that situation psychologically because you think you have all the answers. You disobey God spiritually because you you become God in their life and you mess up your finances investing into a bottomless pit. They are a bottomless pit. They do not want change. They do not want to change and they uh, and does not want change. Change is sitting right there in front of them. This is the way to go. Internally, intuitively, um, um, instinctually, this is the way to go. How is it that the animal, the non-human animal, knows better how to direct its life better than a human? Animals know, uh, if you look at the safari or any of, of the, the National Geographic um, channels, I mean channel with the little documentaries, even a certain uh, herd of animals know not to go a certain way because they know they're going to run into a predator. They know they're going to run into a predator, so they know not to go that way. Okay, how is it that the animal understands that better than the human? When you look at the baby, like the babies, the the uh, the pups, uh, the ones who are... are just born from a lion or elephant or or something like that you can understand them going and wandering off because they're a baby and they're sort of like exploring and they don't understand the dangers of that and that's why you'll see the parent animal go the the, the mother animal especially will go after that lion cub right to get that uh lion cub back on track okay well, when you think about it, homosexual squatters are the same as that lion cub. Not understanding the dangers of, of moving about the way that they are moving about. They may understand that if I sit on this corner, I'm going to get an issue. I'm going to have an issue with somebody. But they don't understand the homelessness of, of the implications of the homelessness of, of their decision making. If there's consequences, there have been many reports lately of people fighting with homeless people, hitting them, kicking them, shooting them in the back of the head. And a lot of times you understand that you're homeless and that there, uh, that there are some consequences to being homeless. You're sleeping out on, uh, uh, you sleep on the ground. You have a tent, things like that. Okay, it's hard. You can't get enough sleep because sleep you never get enough rest, things like that. Okay, you get that. But you don't understand the full consequences of, of that decision that people will look up, 
look on you, look upon you host with hostility so that they can actually harm you. Because you would think that I'm homeless. You should have some compassion for me, some empathy for me. Why are you beating me up? But that's exactly what they want to do. And so you waited too long to change. And you are waiting too long to not accept change. I heard, I'm telling you, I saw a news report of this woman almost bragging that she didn't want to go into the shelter because she didn't feel that uh, it was safe. She kind of slipped that in, but she really got to the point that she really wanted to make. I don't like the rules. Okay, so that means you don't want change because the rules represent instruction. It's going to move you forward. And and if you don't like change and you don't want to change, so, so you're basically saying you want to die homeless. That's the life vision that you have for yourself, that you want to die homeless. Same thing with the homosexual squatter. Um, if you continue to let the homose uh, homosexual squatter stay in your house, because uh, uh, someone is going to die in this situation. The overworked person is always the person who will die. Unless you get that person out, you're going to have a heart attack. It's, it's, you're going to have a stroke. You're going to have a heart attack because you're not taking care of yourself. You're not minding yourself. You are so busy minding that person and keeping up with that person. You can't sleep at night. You go. Uh, uh, you can't have any rest because you know you're not supposed to be in that situation that you don't want to change it. And so if, if the homosexual squatter does not want to change, that means that you don't want to change in a situation if you still keep the homosexual squatter in your house. You don't want you don't want to change and you don't want the situation to change. And it's either gonna it's it's either you're gonna come to a crossroad moment and say, I can't do this anymore, I'm too old for this game, I'm done with this, I gotta move on with my life, I gotta let him go, or you're gonna continue to let that person stay in your house, uh, ruin your finances, ruin your psychology, ruin your mental, emotional, and spiritually to the point that you become you become a shell of yourself. You uh, have mental issues because they are coming because it's something on that homosexual squatter that is mentally unstable and is going to transfer to you if you continue to stay in the situation. That's why that's how we get the distorted vision of ourselves being a resource center, a shelter, a central place for refuge. Or help. You are not a rehabilitation center. You're not a resource center. There are resource centers where people are on the clock and they get paid to tell you about resources. Send that person to the resource center. I had to learn this the hard way, not because of, of, um, of a romantic situation, but um, when I was in college and dealing with friends. And these are friends who had cars and I was riding the bus or the train. And so I would talk to them about something that I heard or something like that or whatever. And, um, and sometimes if you're already in that situation, like in that office, you can pick up a handout or something like that. Okay, no problem. But if you're not, and it takes you having to drive in your car, then um, you're not going to be able to easily do that because you have to get off the bus to get off, right, to go get this uh, thing for the person. Well, my situation was I always volunteered my time. I didn't set boundaries with myself. Uh, so when I ran off at the mouth about opportunities or whatever, the first thing they would say uh, was, okay, can you stop by and get that for me? Okay, again, remind you, they had cars. And like a dummy, um, um, I actually did it. But then I realized the truth of the matter was, oh, they got cars. Why am I getting off the bus to go get something when they can get in their car? And go get the situation themselves. So then what I started to do was I stopped doing that for one. And then I gave them the address because I knew the address, right? I gave them the address. I gave them a phone number. Um, uh, I told them that it's a resource center. And I told them the days and times that they're open, things like that. Oh, but you can't go over there. I mean, I mean, you live over there. No, I can't go over there anymore. It's not on my uh, route. So you would have to go over there. Uh, just take some time. It's open on Fridays. You don't have to go uh, to school or work on Fridays. And they hate when they realize you see them for who they are. They really do hate that because now you're telling them the 
uh, truth about themselves without even having to tell them the truth about themselves. You are off on Friday. Get your big head up and go over there yourself. So therefore, therefore, when I say this, even if we were not talking about the homosexual squatter, just in general, you are not a resource center. You are not a shelter. You are not a central place for refuge and help. They can get up. If they if people really wanted the thing that they claim that they wanted, they will get up and get it themselves. They don't need you. They don't need you to tell them that. Now, sometimes people don't always know certain things. And 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 if you're privy to it, don't withhold good from them to the uh don't withhold good uh uh from them to whom it is due, right? If you have knowledge of a something, don't hoard knowledge. Okay. At the same time, don't get up and walk and get on a bus stop and go to a place where they can go to in their car. And um, and so when you're taking in these homosexuals, and especially if you don't learn from the previous situation, you're, good, you're doomed to repeat a new, don't move people in. Don't move that partner in, that romantic partner in. If you have to move in someone, that tells you right there, they can't take care of themselves. If they can't take care of themselves, that means they can't take care of you. If you got sick, if you got sick, not that you need someone to take care of you because you got a job, you have your place or whatever. After after uh, after all, they're moving in with you. But what if you got sick? They're not going to stay to help you. And if they do stay, if if by chance they do stay to help you, it's because they are after something. It's something that they're after. Because remember, they still haven't gotten a job. They still haven't contributed anything. They still haven't done anything. But you being sick in the bed, still gives them a place to live and so then they'll help you in that way but i wouldn't trust it okay then you exercise pride and some arrogance in believing you are the person's answer to their homeless problem you answer their homeless problem before you understand their problem meaning that you 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 it's the person in the uh, classroom let me volunteer and give this answer here is the teacher asks uh who wants to go and then you raise your hand up so fast or if someone has a problem in their life, you raise your hand up so fast. Or if, if there's a situation with someone, you raise your hand up uh, uh, so fast, you don't actually listen to them. See, I had this problem when I was working uh, with the call center. And um, there was this girl. She kind of positioned herself around me. And, and, and it made me uncomfortable. And um, she would look me up and down and her eyes, you know, her glaze just really made me uncomfortable. One day she asked me for money. She asked me for, I don't know, 40, 50 dollars or something like that. And, uh, and I'm thinking to myself, wait, we work for the same company. We know what each other, uh, how much each other makes. So you ask me for money. And like a dummy, I still gave it to her because I was I was like 19, almost 20 or something like that. So I was still in, in my naivete, but I was naive for a good while, though, before I started to realize how people play you. So she asked me for money. So I gave it, gave it to her. She said she'll pay it back. Um, and so the next day or next whatever her next work day was, she comes in with her hair fixed with a new outfit. And some new kicks, right? Some new shoes. I'm thinking to myself, so how did you get the money to buy those things if you needed money from me? And of course, I started to understand the situation for what it really was. She wanted to use my money to fund her lifestyle. That's exactly, that's the truth of the situation. Okay? Truth of the, the other truth of the situation, I should not have given somebody who works, uh, I should not have given somebody money who also has a job. She has a job and she likely had um, um, family members, right? Cause she just kind of looked like that kind of person who would have a big family. So I didn't, um, I, I didn't understand her problem that she was trying to present as a problem. All she asked was, all she asked for was $40, $50, right? She didn't tell me the reason why I didn't ask for the reason why I should have. Right. And maybe in, Maybe she was hoping that I wouldn't ask, but I think she had actually purpose to use me. That's why she positioned herself. She sat on the other side of the call center, but then all of a sudden she started wanting to sit by me. And uh, uh, it's, it's the way people read you to see how they could use you. 
and they'll throw the first dart. The first dart is always either, can you take me home in your car? Or can you, um, can you take me home? Or can you give me money? Right? And then if you're riding in a car with them, oh, can, um, uh, and, and they take you home. Okay, now they know where you live. And then the first thing they're going to ask, oh, can I use the restroom? I, girl, I, I waited too long. Right? Can I use the restroom? Then they, then you open the door and let them in to use the restroom. Right? They don't need to use the restroom. And a lot of times, they're not too far from their own home. Um, and so what they do is, once they use the restroom or pretend to use the restroom, then they'll come out and say, oh, girl, you got a nice house. All right. Because they're trying to figure out who lives with you, what's going on with you. They're trying to figure out anything about you. So they can talk about it, uh, talk about it on the job. But they can also uh, think to themselves if you may be available for them if something happens, right? And so um, um, they do that, and then it becomes a habit that they take you. Oh, no, I take you home. I do this or whatever. Oh, it's okay. It's on my way. I got to go to the store in, in, in that area anyway. But they are really grooming you. That's a good one. They're really grooming you. They're grooming you to continue to use you. They use you in the first way. And now they have to stretch it out. So then they become homosexual squatters in your life. Eventually, something is going to happen where they're going to have to uh, come and live with you. Because the first thing they're going to ask you when they are surveying your place is, oh, 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 you live by yourself? Oh, you live by yourself? Oh, who lives with you? And they will actually walk to the room to see if someone lives there. Because they are grooming you to use you. That's what they're really after. And so uh, when you give money, when you put something on something that you don't have an understanding about, uh, what it is they actually uh, have an issue with, that's how that uh, happens. That they, uh, you are answering a problem before you fully understand that they either have a problem or don't have a problem. You believe you can fix the person, love the person for a long time, believe that the person would change and hold out hope. And so that right there is usually a romantic situation. That's why we stay in those situations a lot longer. It's interesting that men don't go and live with men. That friend guys, uh, homeboys, all, all that kind of stuff, they never go live with uh, them. They always find a woman that they can go live with because they know that they don't have to be responsible. They know that they don't have that man's breath breath on their neck to hurry up and make decisions and things like that. They know that they can stretch out their homosexual behavior with the woman. But now you see a lot of situations where uh, men who are, are dating each other and one of them needs to go and live with the partner. Now you're seeing that that is homosexual, that they, that they are now moving in with their romantic partner and not doing anything. And so you see videos, video, um, I forget what the name is, but, but it's a comedy situation, right? Where, where the partner is now moving out that man. The male partner is now moving out that man because, because he was taking the situation uh, too far and that he didn't really intend on letting him live there. So you can't fix that person. That person has, to, that's something that has to come from within. That's something that has to come from within. And the longer you try to do that, you're going to mess up whatever you got going on with your life. And it's going to get you off track. That's why you see a lot of people who end up dying a tragedy because they are, they are in places where they, where they're not supposed to be. That's how you die a tragedy. You can die a tragedy by being out of order, being somewhere you're not supposed to be too soon or you are in a place where you're not supposed to be at all. That's why resist the temptation to always go to house parties. Resist the temptation to always go and hang out with friends on trips and things like that. People are ending up dying from going on uh, 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 trips with friends. They're supposed to be your friends, but somehow um, you are ending up dead. It doesn't make any sense. And so they presented themselves to you much longer in uh, being a person who always asks you for something and then you probably funded the trip, they're resentful and offended by that and they try to provoke you to anger in that situation and then you end up 
stand or in jail or something. And so you can't fix that person, love the person for a long time, believe that the person will change and hold out hope. Your hope is going to die. And if you don't get yourself out of that situation, you're going to die. So you become a homosexual squatter because you have invested too long uh, and contributed to the ruin of your own finances. Uh, you become that person, meaning that you put so much money into that person that you now find yourself homeless. You've been blinded by trying to hold out hope and change for that person that you have not been uh, doing something over here in the financial realm to the point that you have become homeless. You have now become that person because then you're going to have to go live with somebody. Either you're going to go back to the shelter, you're going to go to the shelter, or you're going to go and live with somebody. So this is how you are affected by the homosexual, uh, homosexual squatter.